Hello from the Mastery, from Mastery TV. I'm Chris Boyd, a Mastery resident and business owner. I'll be the moderator of today's forum for candidates in the election to the Mastery Planning Board. With me is Ryan Spencer, reporter for the Mastery Enterprise. This forum is an opportunity for the candidates to speak to Mastery voters. The questions we'll be asking were submitted by community members, including the news media, civic leaders, and other interested citizens of Mashpee. From all of the questions submitted, we have selected those that best cover the range of issues that will be facing members of the planning board and those that will allow voters to better know the candidates seeking to serve on the planning board. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement, two minutes to address each question, as well as one minute in response to any follow-up question the moderator may present to further clarify a candidate's response. Each candidate will also have two minutes for a closing statement. The candidates have been provided the rules prior to this forum. We'll get to the first one question shortly, but first let's meet the candidates. John Falone. And Karen Faulkner. Hello. Hi, Karen. Thank you for being here. Each candidate has one minute for their opening statement. The candidate's order was chosen at random earlier, so Karen Faulkner will begin with you. Thank you, Chris. My name is Karen Faulkner, and I'm running for planning board. I grew up in White Plains, New York, graduated from Syracuse University, and earned a law degree from the University of Miami. I was a trial lawyer in Florida for almost 30 years and a certified Florida Supreme Court mediator. My husband and I have been coming here since 1996. We purchased our home in 2001 and retired here in 2013. Last year, I became concerned when I learned that the Mesh B Rotary might be replaced with traffic lights. And I'm increasingly concerned about our polluted ponds, rivers, and bays. We've had 30 years of development without taking care of our wastewater infrastructure. As a planning board member, I will support low impact development, protect our open spaces, woods and waters, promote housing affordability, support smart traffic solutions, and protect our taxpayers with responsible growth, which benefits all Mashby residents. It will be an honor to represent you as I work to preserve Mashpee's character. Thank you, Karen. Now we'll hear the opening statement from John Pallone. John. Hey, thanks, Chris. Good afternoon, or whenever you're watching this. Uh, my name's John Fallone. Um, I've lived in Mashpee for 32 years. Actually, my wife and I settled here right after getting married and have raised our three kids here. Uh, you know, it. I've been asked the question, why after 32 years are you running for the planning board? Uh, you know, Mashpee faces some very important decisions in the next three years for this term, but certainly the next uh, countless years. Uh, before the pandemic, there were issues, uh, Karen addressed them, uh, affordable housing, reasonable, responsible, appropriate development, uh, clean water, conservation of our natural resources, all of the things that we talk about all the time. Uh, you layer on top of that uh, what this country and what this community has gone through and is going through. Uh, and and it, it is serious enough uh, for me to step back and say, yeah, we can't leave this one to chance. Um, and, and the people that I talk to are, are reasonably concerned uh, with the future of this community. And that's why I'm running for the planning board. Thanks, John. Um, let's begin our questions with the discussion about wastewater. There's an article at the town meeting and a ballot question seeking an override that will raise $2.48 million for the design of a sewage treatment plant and sewer system to reduce nitrogen output into the Mashby River watershed. Uh, Karen, do you agree with the decision to move forward with this design and why or why not? I certainly do. The biggest issue we face in this town is the pollution, the polluted waters of Wakoit and Pompanesset Bay. Nitrogen overload is killing our bays. Phosphorus is killing our ponds. 75% of the pollution is caused by wastewater from our household use, 
12% from fertilizers and 13% from stormwater coming off of impervious surfaces. Phase one of the nitrogen management plan, because that's what it is, we're gonna hear at the town meeting on June 15th. And I urge everybody to support this because we have to begin, we have to begin somewhere and the time is now. Who is going to want to buy a house here? Who's going to want to visit here? And what about our property values? The time to fix it to begin is now. What we're asking the people to do is to approve this warrant such that the such that the we approve the design and engineering of phase one of this wastewater treatment facility and collection system for the Mashpee watershed. We have to begin. We have to say yes. John, I pose the same question to you. Do you agree with the decision to move forward with this design and why or why not? Thanks, Chris. Uh, I do approve uh, the, decision, the decision to move forward. Uh, this has been a topic of discussion for years, uh, not only in Mashpee, but across Cape Cod. Uh, and, and there are communities that have started to address the issue. There are communities that have not. Uh, we've talked about it for a long time. Uh, there, you've got to start somewhere. I agree with Karen. Uh, you've got to begin somewhere. Uh, it, you know, the, the concern that I hear uh, in the community is, uh, you know, it, it will be wastewater in place of development or in place of, uh, you know, infrastructure uh, investment. And uh, I believe that it, it, it can't be an either or. It's got to be, uh, you know, we've got to address all of these things concurrently because, quite frankly, they're interrelated. Uh, and to take one off and ignore uh, some of the other things is a mistake. Uh, so, yes, we have to address wastewater. Absolutely. Uh, and I do support the plan. Uh, and, and there are other things that we've got to do it as well. Thanks, Ryan. You had a question. Yeah, so along the same lines, Mashpee has been engaged, as you mentioned, in a decades long planning process for adapting wastewater infrastructure to meet the level of development in the town. Uh, what specific measures should the planning board members keep in mind when considering the delicate balance between growth and environmental impact, especially when it comes to wastewater? Well, we certainly should keep in mind that any new development that goes forward has to comply with our wastewater problem. We cannot exacerbate this. I mean, after all, we had 30 years of developers building with no real wastewater infrastructure. And now we, the taxpayers, are going to pay the price for this. But as I say, what, can, what else can we do? Do we want this town to be harmed by this and to lose our residents to stop people from coming here. Uh, it's its a serious problem. I don't know if I've answered your question. What Could you repeat that again so I can help you a little better? What specific measures should planning board members keep in mind when considering the delicate balance between growth and environmental impact, whether it be wastewater or else? Okay, first of all, we we want to work toward the growth that residents want. We don't want growth that creates a tax burden on the residents. That's something we have to consider because we can get tax revenue from a development, but we have to look at the burden. What, what might this cost the taxpayers? Is there a net benefit to doing this with a, an uptick in taxes? That's something we have to know and that requires a fiscal impact analysis from the developer to prepare that at his expense, and we, we the town, should, su should supply the expert in that case. John, same question to you. Thank you, Ryan. Um, you know, I, I think you answered your question in the question. Uh, it's a balance. There's no question about it. Uh, you know, whatever comes whatever development takes place from here on in needs to account for not only uh, you know wastewater mitigation but traffic 
and affordability and all of the things that we talk about uh, all the time, very important issues. So those, you know, as future development takes place, it's got to incorporate all of those all of those issues and those themes because they're all critically important to the future of this community. Uh, so I, I, I think when you ask the question, the answer is it's a balance between all of those things and it can't be one or the other. Are there specific, specific measures that you would like to see if a development a developer brought a project to the table? Um, you asking me? Yes, yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, the, the open space, pedestrian friendly uh, development, uh, th things that keep the character and charm of the community. Um, you know, I know Mashby, Mashby Commons is a, is, a, is a hot topic always. Um, you know, the, the uh, plans that are currently uh, being negotiated with the Cape Cod Commission, the town and the commons, certainly take into account, uh, you know, the village feel and the charm and the character uh, that this town enjoys and, and quite frankly is unique, I believe, to any town on the Cape. Uh, you know, so, so taking those elements into account as future development comes, to, comes in front of the board, uh, I think is critically important. Uh, we don't want high rises. We don't want, uh, you know, uh, certain types of development. We do want density uh, because we've only got so much land, and and uh, you know we've we've got to be thoughtful about that. Uh, we've got to be responsible, and and the development has to be appropriate. But certainly uh, the, the designs we've seen and and what's been what's been built so far uh, it is a real testament to to what the town has done to make sure that it's appropriate and and you know, wastewater aside, and, and those, you know, as we start to bring wastewater and, and traffic mitigation and those things that come natural with growth, we've got to make sure that those are addressed as future development takes place. May I add to that, Chris? Sure, oh yeah. Um, I, I think what we really are looking at now, um, I agree with what John said, but in addition, I think we really have to look at those cluster subdivision bylaw for over five acres because we can build, they can build, you know, indeed they deed restricted of housing. We can get, you know, a number of houses in that regard, but they have to set aside a minimum of 50% of the upland land, which is great. So we build the cluster houses close to the transportation, to the stores, you know, not build out off some, you know, road in a distant place but close to the the commons i think we're talking about the commons at least i am and that density will spare that land because everything i've read in the local comprehensive plan and the citizen survey of 2010 and i'm waiting for the new survey to come out what did people who moved here come for the open land the tranquility the small town character and we've got to preserve that open land. And that's it. Yeah, I'm going to dig a little further into Mashpee Commons. John, uh, in March, the Cape Cod Commission gave approval to Mashpee Commons to enter into a development agreement process, which will commence a three-way three negotiation between the commission, the commons, and the town. Uh, the planning board is the negotiating body for the town. How do you view the commons plan to expand and how will you approach negotiations? Good question, uh, Chris. I, I actually attended many of the uh, listening sessions and the design sessions uh, that the commons had uh, over a period of, I believe it was 12 months. It may have been more than that. Uh, you know, I found their approach to be very, uh, thoughtful, reasonable, uh, they took input, reworked design, uh, you know, the, the, it was very collaborative. Uh, I, I certainly uh, think the plans that are currently in place in front of the commission for negotiation are, are a collaboration between the community and Mashpee Commons. Uh, I saw those plans change markedly 
as the listening tour went on and as they incorporated the feedback. Uh, you know, the, the study that Karen references, 93% of the respondents to that study said they were satisfied with the development that's taken place in the town over the last 20 years, 93%. So while Mashpee Commons becomes a hot button, um, you know, we may be trying to make a problem where there isn't one because what's what's been developed so far, nine out of 10 of the, of the respondents to that survey agreed that it was appropriate and they were satisfied with it. Karen, same question to you. How do you view the Commons plan to expand and how would you approach negotiations? Okay, well, I know that the town is seeking to develop 186 acres around Mashpee Commons in the Rotary area, and it's a three-party agreement. This is going to be one of the most critical decisions the planning board will ever make in determining the character of Mashpee in our lifetimes and for future generations. We need to know what they're going to build. We have an idea they want to do the form-based code because that's what negotiations or about in the past. But the problem, which is a little different than what John said, is that many of us, myself included, are not for giving them carte blanche on the form-based code because we want to control, I want to con help control the density, the setbacks, the parking, the stormwater uh, management issues. And I want open space and a lot of open space, and I think they need to give it to us. And one of the issues is affordable housing, because they stopped that project on Market Street. They didn't complete it, I don't know if they will, but we need that affordable housing, because the only way we can keep families on the Cape and provide a stable workforce is to have affordable housing. And it's also for the elderly people, too, uh, for, the disabled and the very poor. So we need to look at that. Carte blanche, and I've heard that expression before, is not something that I am for. We wanna make sure that the growth is reasonable and it maintains the character, the small town character that we love. And I would say, in what John said, you're right. We like, we like what Meshby Commons has done thus far, but we don't want a sprawling metropolis here. We want small town. Chris, may I? Yeah, go ahead, sure. Um, you know, the designs that, that have been public uh, are certainly not urban. Uh, they, they are very much in line with the character of Mashpee Commons to date. Uh, and the future designs have more open space and affordable housing as part of the plan. And, and the plan is over multiple years. You have to remember what's there today took 30 years to get there. Uh, they've got, they have been very paced with their development. Uh, has, it, has it outpaced infrastructure, wastewater, those things? Of course it has. Uh, and we've addressed those and they will be addressed in the plans going forward. Uh, but, but what is currently on the table uh, that's available for everyone to view, uh, in my opinion, is very thoughtful and, and really keeps with the character of the character and charm of what we've got today. Karen, if you have any further follow up. Well, I, I, I just because it's on the table right now doesn't mean that's what they're going to do. They were going to build a number of affordable housing units on Market Street that they stopped building because apparently it wasn't financially feasible or the profit wasn't there for them. So we can't guarantee they're going to do what's on the board right now. So we want, we, I on the planning board, want to maintain control and decision making, maybe through a special permitting review process about density, setbacks, parking, stormwater. Um, I want to know are they going to build a parking garage back there? Where is it going to be? What's it going to look like? Is there going to be green space around it, et cetera? Okay. Ryan has a question. Yeah, so uh, traffic has long been an issue, not only in Mashpee, but just across Cape Cod. 
Uh, the Commons proposed expansion overlaps with the preliminary considerations about changes to the rotary. How should the town manage traffic concerns, whether it be at the rotary or elsewhere in town, as it looks to the future? Who's right. question? John, I think you had to start. Thank you. You know, I, I read the, uh, the the rotary study, the traffic study. Uh, there, there's no question uh, that there is, that it's getting heavier and heavier. And, and we've got to do something about traffic mitigation. We talk about infrastructure investment. Um, you know, as we, it, it, as we move forward with any development, as Karen has said, and as I have said, uh, there's got to be, you know, benchmarks and, and accountability for infrastructure, traffic mitigation, wastewater, and, and affordability. Uh, all of those things need to be considered. Do I advocate for removing the Mashby Rotary? I'm not sure. I don't think any of us know enough yet to make that to make that assessment. What we do know is we've got to do something to mitigate traffic. And there's there's a host of solutions out there. Uh, we've got to get together with other town, uh, you know, the other town board, and sit collaboratively and go through the decisions and the debate and come to a come to a reasonable solution that's appropriate for the residents of Mashpee. Uh, do I know what that solution is today? I do not. Well, I would say this, that the larger developments for sure have to be, have to do traffic impact reports at project review. That's a necessity. Um, I, I attended that Cape Cod, one of the public meetings last summer, and that's when I learned that traffic lights were a big consideration, or even an underpass overpass, which, you know, was a very upsetting to me. But I do know that the, uh, the, the Rotary Safety Audit came out in December, and yes, there are issues, but we're waiting now for that report, the final report. I think it's, been, it's being reviewed by MassDOT, DOT, and, and the Cape Cod Commission. It's supposed to come out in June. So I'm waiting to see what that report says. And I would look and hope that we could do a rotary retrofit, not traffic lights, not an overpass, perhaps widen it, maybe shrink it down, uh, whatever. It, I think so much of that rotary is part of what Mashpee character is. I mean, that's just one part of the town. We've got to address the other roads too. And I agree, we have to coordinate this with other towns to figure out what we are going to do. But you know, that rotary in the summertime, it's not that big a problem. I mean, yes, there's a little backup, but if we put lights there, there'll be a bigger backup. Coming down 28, where it always seems to back up, you know, coming from Hyannis, like a mile back there. So I think we, we have to learn what is right and we have to defer to the experts and we need more information to know exactly what we should do with the roads here. Thank you, Karen. You, you mentioned affordable housing. I just want to touch on that for a minute, if I could. Um, affordable housing has been a running issue on Cape Cod for years. As a member of the planning board, whichever candidate is elected will be faced with the question of how to make Mashpee a place where people can afford to live and work. What models of affordable housing do you believe to be most promising and how would you work as a planning board member to make living, Mashpee, living in Mashpee more affordable? Well, I know of one possibility and that would be to work with the, the Mashpee Housing Production Plan. We have to encourage partnerships with developers to produce affordable housing with special attention to our vulnerable people in town here. Um, it's, it is difficult because, you know, you, affordable housing, the statistics show that a, a family of four or two should not spend more than 30% of their gross annual income on rent. So you can figure that out and people home watching this can say, well, we're spending more than 30%. We're only at 5% and we're mandated by the state to be at 10% of our year round of housing should be affordable. We don't have that. It is very difficult. And some people have said, 
well, if we put affordable housing in Mashpee Commons, the people who are renting there on affordable housing, they can't afford to shop mm -hmm. there. Well, I mean, is that so bad? I mean, they're not turning, the affordable housing units are maintained and they're beautiful. And I think we have to perhaps change the bylaw, uh, a bylaw and create some kind of affordable housing mandate for developers to come in and they need to build these houses. I mean, I think it's disappointing that Mashby Commons stopped building those affordable units up on Market Street. They just stopped it. So that's, that's what I think. John, I'd pose the same question to you. What models of affordable housing do you believe to be most promising uh, as, a, as, a plan, as a prospective planning board member? Thank you, Chris. No, I can't. Um, you know, this is this is not a unique problem to Mashpee. Uh, this is a problem across the Cape. Being, you know, working in in uh, in the banking industry on Cape for the last uh, 12 years, uh, this is this is a, a an annual problem. Every strategic planning process that every organization is going through that can help with this, this is either one, two, or three of the hot topic. Uh, the the um, you know the 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 Mashpee Commons take it up. Let's not isolate it to Mashpee Commons. Affordable housing has to be uh, a win-win uh, because if it isn't going to allow the developer to get their money back and maybe make a slight profit, they're not going to do it. Uh, it's got to be a win-win for everybody, and there's a way to do it. Towns have figured out how to get their percentage of affordable housing to the 10%. Uh, we've got to do that. You know, we've got to be, I, I don't know if we'll understand what density means uh, in this new COVID environment. Uh, you know, you hear, you read stories about people moving out of the city and out of apartments um, because of the proximity issues that, that, that we're being faced with. Uh, will, that, will, that, uh, will that result in an influx of people coming to the Cape and potentially Mashpee to settle because there is a lot more distance between uh, be between people. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I I think the the design that we've seen from Mashpee Commons certainly has an affordable housing component to it. I believe that if you if you make that um, reasonable and appropriate for the developer, we can get there. Well, you brought up COVID-19, and I think uh, Ryan has a question, not surprisingly. Uh, mm -hmm. This question here actually just uh, makes reference to it. It does not uh, dive into it quite yet. Uh, before the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the MASHP planning board was engaged with uh, revising the town's local comprehensive plan, uh, a long document which lays out the town's vision for the future uh, from economic development to open space, public safety, coastal resources, transportation, and more. What are two or three items you see as most central to the town and its future, and how would you work to implement your vision for Mashpee as a member of the planning, planning board? Uh, um, I think we start with Karen. Okay. Yes. Under the local comprehensive plan, the land use and growth management section, um, I sort of concentrated on that one. I read the, the comprehensive, but that one just kind of jumped out at me because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at development. And, and I feel that right now, the way things are, we've got to find, we've got to probably build cluster subdivisions, no more single houses or very few single. We can't afford to put this, these houses on this land. We, our land, I think we have 40% left of open space, and we have to do things like, for example, the uh, open, in, open space incentive development bylaw. The only developers who it, it bears on, only developers who have 20 acres or more. It was written for Mashpee Commons. No one else here that I know of has 20 acres of land. They can build up to three stories but they have to set aside open space, but they get all kinds of perks. That's what should happen in terms of land growth and management, land use growth and management. 
what I've learned is they can build with density since we're talking about density and based on the quantity and quality of the open space they set aside, they can build six to 10 times more units, which is great if it's, con if it's controlled with a nice tree barrier and it's not obtrusive. I don't want it, wouldn't want it on the rotary. I wouldn't want it fronting the rotary, but back in that space or maybe over by Christ the King, they own the land behind there up to the, pretty close up to the Quashnet River. I would like to see that. Thank you, John. Um, you know, the, the people I talk to um, are concerned. Your, your question's a very good one, Ryan. Uh, you know, the, any planning that's taken place prior to February probably has to be rethought uh, because what's happened since February uh, is going to impact, profoundly impact, uh, the way we move forward and what that new normal looks like, and none of us know what that looks like. Uh, you know, the the future of retail, uh, the future of some of these mom and pop stores uh, is 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 very uncertain. And and uh, you know, no one planned to be out of work for 90 days or 120 days. Uh, you don't plan for those things. Uh, and and the the impact of what we've gone through and what we're still going through uh, is going to be profound. And and I think that any plan uh, needs to be rethought with that lens, looked at with that lens. Uh, you know, and and we've got Mashpee's got it's almost a 50-50 split between land that's developed or approved for development and land that's been set aside as protected open space. There's a very small slice that's left um, th th that's typically in play. Uh, so we've got to be very thoughtful about how we develop that last slice, uh, if we develop that last slice. And what we should be concentrating on, and what I hear when I talk to the residents of Mashpee is, how do we develop and redevelop some of the, you know, the land that's already been developed? Um, so that we can we can continue to increase the tax base and continue to 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 build housing so people will come and live here uh, and work here and spend here uh, and enjoy this community that we've known uh, that we've come to to know and love. Uh, but but you know, COVID nineteen has thrown a monkey wrench into any long term strategic plan, and if if we're not considering uh, looking at those things with with a new lens. Uh, we probably should. I add, I don't think that we're talking about building cluster subdivisions or uh, now, right now, but I, a COVID-19 will not always be with us. This might go on for two years, but there's going to come a time when people are going to want to get back in the game, so to speak. And he's right, John's right about we don't know what's going to happen to these people who have these little shops in Mashpee Commons and elsewhere. It's devastating. But we're not talking about building tomorrow. We're talking about planning for the future. And redevelopment of some of these places in some of these buildings in Mashpee would be a great idea um, because if, if they build under the 40B uh, affordable housing comprehensive permit, which they still have, there's no height restriction, although all proposals have to be approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I think, you know, maybe in certain places we could have four and five story buildings and it's cheaper to build up than out. So I would look for redevelopment as well in Mashpee Commons. Well, I have good news. I'm down to the final question before we move along. Um, <laughs> Both both candidates with us have a unique personal and professional experience, and neither has served it, but neither has served in an elected capacity. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, within town government, how has your personal and professional background prepared you for a position on the planning board, and how will you implement implement that experience if elected to the board? John, I'll start with you, please. Thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, I've I've had 
30 plus years of experience in financial financial services, uh, primarily banking, working for national, uh, large national banks, regional banks, and, and most recently uh, community banking, uh, which, you know, as an aside, is the home run. Uh, national banks are great, regional banks are great, community banks uh, rock it. Uh, so a little plug for the community banking uh, industry. Uh, during my time in community banking, in my, in my time in banking, uh, you know, my focus has been on strategic planning and, and de plan development. Uh, you know, my skill set, I think, will complement uh, the skills that are already in place on the planning board. Uh, I know how to bring people together with a, with a common cause, you know, an overarching common cause, but everybody's got a little piece of, of, of you know, their specialty. And, and I am, you know, one of my skills is to be able to bring those people together to collaborate and partner and come to the best solution. It may not be the solution you came to the table with, uh, but collectively you come up with what's the best solution. For the for the residents of Mashpee, uh, you know my my certainly my my history with the town, being here for 32 years and and watching it grow and develop and flourish um, is irreplaceable. Uh, I've you know Sharon and I have watched this place uh, just just come alive. Uh, we're excited about the future. Clearly, if you read the comprehensive survey. Uh, there, the, the, there's an overwhelmingly positive response about the feel and, and community, uh, you know, engagement in this town. Uh, I feel that I, I'm part of that. We're part of that. Uh, and, um, you know, my experience with many of the nonprofits on the Cape, including those, uh, many of those in Mashpee, helping them develop a, a long-term strategic plan. Uh, and then execute that plan. Uh, you know, we talk about how are you going to uh, deal with future development and what are you going to require when people come to the table with a plan. If we've got a long-term strategic plan in place with benchmarks and milestones and guidelines, then the board becomes much more proactive and much more advisory because there's a roadmap there and there's a framework and there's a filter that everything goes through because we've come to agreement that this is the planning strategy for Mashpee for the next, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, whatever that looks like. Um, and, and, and you've got something to work with and it isn't carte blanche, but it's, it's not so rigid. It's, it's a very, you know, it's a very clear framework. And if you, if your plan comes in and it's inside that framework, you know, we'll work with you if it's if it if it isn't, and the framework serves as a filter. And I have seen that work time and again uh, in in business. And there's no reason why it can't work for. Right, for the thank, thank you, John. Um, same question to you, Karen. How has your personal and professional background prepared you for a position on the planning board? Well, as you know, uh, I've spent 30 years, almost 30 years, as a trial lawyer. And with that, I had to develop critical thinking, a lot of research, very heavy reading. So I'm not adverse to reading any any document that comes before the planning board, any of the laws. I've read most of them right now as we sit here. But reading them is one thing, but working them is another. It's the same as a lawyer. You learn evidence in the, in the classroom, but you don't know how to apply it until you get in the class in the in the workspace i am a, i was a certified florida supreme court mediator i've been involved in many many heated negotiations and i know how to mediate and negotiate because i've learned over the years that mediation or negotiation has to be a win-win for both sides basically not that you got everything you wanted but you don't go away from the table feeling that you were really damaged. And I think I have that skill. Uh, and I, I, I believe these skills are definitely transferable to my being a citizen planner because that's what we will be. And we will learn tremendous amount. And I'm a good listener and that's what we have to do. And I've been listening to people all around town. And that is why my, my uh, platform is 
to help preserve Mashpee character and the other five tenets of it, which I'll say in my closing. Well, that's that. Uh, we are done with our questions, so I'll move on. John, would you like to make a closing statement? Sure. Thank you, Chris. Um, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Karen, um, for for putting this forum together. It certainly is unusual. Uh, you know, we're in we're in unusual times. Uh, you know, I get asked a lot. Why now? Why after 32 years of being a resident of Mashpee are you are you you know running for the planning board? Uh, you know Mashpee is at an inflection point, uh, as is much of the Cape and and much of the country. Uh, what we do now and going forward is going to profoundly impact the future of this community. Uh, you know Sharon and I ended up settling here 32 years ago, and there's not a better place on the planet. To raise a family and then to to, to retire to, uh, we firmly believe that. Um, Sharon o often references, uh, you know, we w our kids were lucky enough to grow up in Mayberry RFD. Now I'm probably dating myself, Ryan. You have no idea where Mayberry is, uh, but it, those of you that know understand the 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 reference. Uh, you know, we we care deeply about this uh, community for for a variety of very good reasons. Um, there are there are the, the people here are are second to none, uh, and and they're concerned about the issues facing the community in the next three, five, ten years, uh, and, and how we solve those issues is is going to make a big difference. And this one we we cannot chance this one. Uh, we've got big issues with big price tags, and not just financial price tags. Uh, and you know, you you think about this community, and we talk about the charm and the character. Well, the character is the people. All right, the people in this community make this community what it is. I mean, watch what happened at the Polar Cave over the weekend. Uh, what happened there was devastating. Okay, but the response was amazing. Uh, it was amazing to the national news that picked it up. It's not amazing to the people that live here because we watched that happen every day this community comes together and supports each other uh and and you know what has that got to do with the planning board i'm not sure if it has anything to do with the planning board okay what i know is uh my sharon and i care deeply about this community we're we're concerned about its future uh we're excited about its future um uh, i think i can help with the skills that I can bring to the planning board to make sure that it's appropriate, and 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 we continue to build on the 93% that are satisfied with with the way things have gone in the last 20 years. Thank you, thank you, John. Karen, would you like to make a closing statement too, please? Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, Mashby TV and Mashby Enterprise for hosting this campaign forum. Despite these trying times. Fighting COVID-19, we must be positive and know a better day is coming to Mashpee. This will end eventually. It may be a while. I, I, like John, I love this town. We came here, as I said, in 2013 to live permanently. And I'm going to work very hard on the planning board to preserve Mashpee's character and make sure that I represent all the people of Mashpee. We have very challenging decisions ahead to include balancing the need to protect our natural resources with responsible growth. Business as usual won't provide the solution we need to protect our environment as the town continues to grow and prosper. I am proud to be endorsed by David Whedon, Selectman Mary Wagan, Planning Board Chair, Joe Cummings, outgoing Planning Board Member, Dennis Balzarini and Rob Hansen, Planning Board Members, Glenn McCarthy of Mashpee Clean Waters, Richard DeSorga, member of the Historical Commission, and numerous other wonderful people. I would be honored to have your vote. You can read more about me at my website, which is KarenFaulknerPlanningBoard.com. Let me know what your concerns are and print an early ballot application if you need one. I hear what Mashpee residents are saying about keeping the town's open spaces, improving, but not drastically changing the rotary, cleaning up the waterways, building housing affordability, 
and making sure that new developments fit with what Mashpee residents want. As a planning board member, I will support low impact development, protect our woods, waters, and open spaces, promote housing affordability, support smart traffic solutions, and protect our taxpayers with responsible growth. As a lawyer, negotiator, and mediator, I pledge to serve the people of Mashpee and make our needs come first. The planning board will be my only job. I can be tough, but reasonable, as I work to preserve Mashpee's character. Thank you for your vote. Karen Faulkner for planning board, June 23rd. Thank you, Karen. I just want to emphasize again, thank you to all of you under the circumstances. This is not the way we normally <laughs> do the TV forums. So again, thanks to all to you all. That concludes MASHP TV's Planning Board Candidates Forum. Thanks again to you both for, for participating and to you too, Ryan, with your questions. Please let your family and friends know they can watch replays of this forum on channels 99, and on YouTube and Facebook right up to election day. And don't forget to cast your vote at the Quashnet School on election day, which this year is Tuesday, June 23rd. The polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. For your safety, the town clerk is recommending that you consider voting early by mail. Mm -hmm. Go to the link below to receive a vote by mail application. With my colleague, Ryan Spencer, I'm Chris Boyd, this is Mashpee TV. Thank you for watching and be safe. Hi. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you.